welcome back to Everyday Poser. Thank you again for joining during this fun time as we explore different yoga poses together. My name is Lauren Fox. What we're going to do today is work on one of my favorite poses and a pose that I think nearly every student of mine loves, child's pose, Balasana. So to do this, what we're going to do is make our way up onto hands and knees into tabletop position. Make sure that the fingers are spread wide, knees hips width distance apart. This is what we worked on yesterday. So just coming back to that tabletop position that you're very familiar with now, hopefully. You're gonna to start to bring the big toes together behind you, separate your knees a little bit wider than hips width distance. Some teachers, including myself, I'll say about mats width distance apart. What you wanna do now is lower the hips back towards the heels and reach the hands out in front of you, drawing your forehead down towards the ground. So again, you're reaching the hands forward, bringing the forehead down, connecting your third eye center, that Ajna Chakra, down to your mat. You again just want to make sure that the big toes are connected here. Feel that place of connection and feel the connection between your forehead and the mat, bringing your stare to that third eye center. I like to close my eyes here and start to focus inward here in child's pose. Sometimes we'll even start yoga practices here in child's pose, Balasana. So once you have your forehead connected, you can do things to move around and get comfortable, like massaging your forehead, your third eye on the mat, which is stimulating your Ajna Chakra. As you bring your forehead back to center, you can reach the fingers a little bit more forward. That'll draw a little bit more length here through the backs of your arms. And now, if you'd like to, you can start to deepen your breath here, inhaling in through the nose and then exhaling through the back of your throat. We're creating what's called Ujjayi breath as we inhale together in through the nose. And then exhale through the back of your throat. You're creating that warm, swirling breath through the back of your throat here as you constrict it. Ujjayi breath translates to breath of victory. Although some people also call it ocean sounding breath. When I used to teach preschoolers yoga, we called it Darth Vader breathing. So if you're a fan of Star Wars, Maybe consider it Darth Vader breath. But when you find that breath, just continue it here in this position and throughout your entire asana practice. If you find that this hurts your hips a little bit or your shoulders, another option you can take is to bring your knees together. So if you want to work more on opening up the upper back thoracic spine, another option for child's pose is again bringing the knees together, bringing the hips back, lowering the forehead to the ground, and bringing arms to side body, palms facing up, just allowing your shoulders to melt down towards the ground here. I've had teachers also call this mouse pose, but it's another variation of child's pose. I think that everybody who practices yoga should be familiar with. Again, just enjoying this yummy position. You can always sway a little bit from side to side to open up your hips. And you might find that one option just feels way better than the other. You can just come into that when you're ready, whatever option that might be. I'm going to go ahead and open up my knees again, coming back to traditional Balasana. And again, reaching the hands out in front of me. Just come back to my breath, inhaling in and exhaling out. Surrendering, breathing now into my low back. This is an option that targets more of your low back and opens the hips up a little bit more. Another option here in child's pose is to bring your palms face up towards the sky. This is again that gesture of receiving that we discussed in our meditation practice. So you can bring the palms up in child's pose and also receive this pose as well as the practice that you have ahead of you. So just receiving things right now, love, happiness, health, a great year ahead of you. Maybe just receiving this first Monday of 2021, yay. Good job, everybody. Come back to the breath if you've lost it. Try to sink those hips down a little bit further as you exhale. Wonderful. Let's take another deep breath in and exhale. Come back up onto hands and knees into tabletop position. So another variation of child's pose, which is really good, I think, for digestion, I learned this a few years ago at your yoga journal conference, is bringing fists into your hands. 
Nice. But these are fists of peace, not of hate. So bring the fists to your abdomen, so to the lower stomach area. Yep, that's where you want to place them. You can take a look at me here again. I'm bringing the hands right here. So just above the thighs, pressing into my abdomen. I'm going to inhale and then exhale to lean my body forward. As I do this, I'm pressing my hands into both the ascending and descending portion of my colon. This also helps to relieve any constipation and helps to release toxins from the body. So I just want to go over this with you as well. Before you reach the medicine cabinet, try bringing the hands to your low stomach first and then just lean forward and take about five to 10 breaths here. Exhale one, inhale, exhale two. Maybe the forehead can touch the mat. Try to relax your neck. Exhale three, inhale, exhale four. Take another deep breath in and exhale five. Again, if you want to hold this longer, you're more than welcome to. This is your practice. All I am is a guide. Good job. And let's go ahead, come back up onto our hands and knees and take ourselves into child's pose one more time. Traditional child's pose, reaching the hands forward and bringing the forehead down to the ground. So child's pose is not only a great place to start your practice, but it's also a really good place to come back to throughout your entire practice, should you lose your breath, your intention for your practice, or if you feel pain in a pose, come back to child's pose to reconnect to your breath and intention. Those are the two most, most important parts of your practice anyway. So if you're breathing and you're a nice person, you're doing yoga, be nice to yourself on and off your mat. Again, stay here as long as you'd like to. If it was up to me, I would stay there the rest of the day. <laughs> go ahead and cross the ankles behind you. Good, and take a seat. Let's go ahead now and come into our daily meditation practice. So if you want to, you can reach over and grab a bolster or a blanket to put underneath of your hips. I think I'm gonna use a blanket today. I used my yoga pillow yesterday. So we'll go ahead and bring that underneath of the hips. Good, just crossing the ankles here. If you'd like to come into half lotus, of course you're welcome to take that option now or take full lotus position. Bringing your hands to your knees, keeping the palms down. Today, if you need to get a little bit more grounded on this first Monday of the year, palms down, or maybe receiving like we did in child's pose, bringing the palm space up to receive something that you need in your life right now. You can bring your thumb and index fingers together if you'd like to. Another option here, another mudra, is bringing the left hand on top of your right hand and then bringing the thumbs together so that they touch just allowing your shoulders to relax. The hands are resting heavy on your thighs. Again, if this doesn't feel natural to you, you can always just place the hands back at your knees, palms down or up. Good, and lifting up out of your low back once you find that option that works for your meditation. Now you're starting to tuck your chin very, excuse me, very slightly, and then start to close your eyes, bringing the gaze back in. Feeling the ground under the hips here, feeling the hands resting heavy on your knees or on your hips. Start to close your eyes, focusing your gaze inward. And just let the breath start to roll in and out as you inhale in through your nose and exhale out through the nose. Inhaling in and exhaling out. Hearing the sound of your breath in your meditation. When things go back to normal, you're also going to be able to hear the sound of your neighbor's breath. It's also a great reminder to come back to the breath if you've lost it. Hearing the sound of your neighbor's breathing. Maybe you're practicing with a loved one right now in your home. Just hearing that breath rolling in and out together.
If you would like to continue your yoga practice, this meditation, you're welcome to stay right here and continue breathing. Otherwise, if you feel like you're complete with meditation for the day, start to open the eyes and allow light to come back in. Wonderful job. Beautiful, everybody. Honoring yourself and your practice, bringing arms to side body. Inhale, reach the hands up overhead. Maybe lift your gaze up towards the sky. Open up through your heart. And then bring the palms together. Gaze is forward. Lower your hands down to heart center, Anjali Mudra. And now let's lower our gaze down towards the fingertips as we set our intention for the rest of our day ahead of us, thinking of something we'd like to dedicate the practice that starts off of the mat with, or maybe go ahead and end this practice now with a round of OM as we take a deep breath in together. Shanti, 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 peace, peace, peace. The light in me bows to the light shining brightly inside of you. So much gratitude. Thank you for being here today. If you haven't gotten the chance or opportunity, go ahead and please subscribe to our channel. If you have any questions or feedback, any comments, please list them below. I'll be happy to reach out to you. The light in me bows to the light shining brightly inside of you. Namaste. Have a wonderful day. Hello and welcome back everybody to Everyday Poser. Thank you so much for joining today's class. My name is Lauren Fox and we're joined here with Maurice who just actually walked away. I think he quits. 